Normandale Lake Office Park presents What to Do in an Emergency. The Normandale Lake Office Park complex contains five separate buildings, parking structures, and pedestrian connections. This video will discuss and point out features common to the 8,000, 8,200, 8,300, 8,400, and 8,500 office towers. Some features will vary slightly from building to building based upon age and configuration. There are some 6,000 people working at Normandale Lake Office Park, and their safety is our most important concern. As a worker here, you may have wondered what you should do in the event of an emergency. What would you do if a fire broke out on the floor in which you work? How could you help if a coworker suffered a heart attack? What if a tornado were sighted? What would you do if your elevator was stuck between floors? What should you do if you receive a bomb threat? What should you do in the event of workplace violence? At Normandale Lake Office Park, your safety is our primary concern. We have produced this video to introduce you to the park's life safety systems and procedures. We want you to know how to report an incident and what to do in an emergency situation. Many contemporary safety features were included in the construction of our five buildings at Normandale Lake Office Park, and they are being updated continuously. Throughout the complex, life safety, heating, air conditioning, and security systems are monitored by trained personnel. For your safety, our buildings are all equipped with a water sprinkling system. Sprinkler heads are located throughout the buildings where applicable. If a smoke detector were activated, an alarm or message would sound and strobes would flash in certain areas. A computer would indicate and locate the problem and the fire department would be summoned. Building personnel would be paged to implement emergency procedures and to assist the fire department. Our emergency system is designed to unlock fire rated exit doors, creating an evacuation route to safe areas. Elevators may be taken out of service but would remain available for use by the fire department. Do not use elevators in a fire situation unless specifically directed by the fire department. Each floor of the office complex is equipped with an emergency paging system, which will inform and direct you during an emergency. For your own safety, you should know the location of the fire extinguishers and stairwells on your floor. When necessary, the building's emergency generator would automatically provide power for service, lighting, and the fire life safety system. If a fire or a tornado should require you to vacate your office, specially designated people are assigned to give you instructions. They are called floor wardens. They are co-workers who have been designated to direct you in emergency situations. Make it a point to know the floor warden in your office and follow the directions given by the warden during any emergency. If your office does not have a floor warden, you may wish to appoint a person who will be knowledgeable about their role in the safety of co-workers. Now that you have been familiarized with the building safety equipment, this is what you should do in case of an emergency. First, keep calm and dial 911. Make sure to give the 911 operator a description of the situation and your complete building address. To assist in this process, we have stickers available for all tenant handsets. Please contact your floor warden if you need additional stickers or if you are unaware of your building's specific address. Please make note of the following building addresses. 8000 Tower 8331 Norman Center Drive 8200 Tower 5600 West 83rd Street 8300 Tower 8300 Norman Center Drive 8400 Tower 5600 West 84th Street 8500 Tower 5800 West 84th Street after you've called 911, call building management at 952-921-2050. To report a fire, medical, or police emergency, dial 911 to inform local authorities. Then dial 
It is important that you dial both numbers so that trained building personnel will be in position to implement emergency procedures and to direct professional emergency units to the scene of the incident. In the event of a medical emergency, dial 911 and then call 952-921-2050. With the location and nature of the problem, assign someone to meet the emergency team at the elevator and guide them to the scene. Professional emergency personnel will arrive at your floor as quickly as possible to administer medical assistance. You should also be aware that each of the five buildings are equipped with automatic external defibrillators or AEDs. The floor location of the defibrillators can be found on the panel of each elevator car. Instructions on how to use the defibrillators are located on the instruments. In case of severe weather, you may need to leave your office. Should conditions warrant, you may hear a warning siren through the Bloomington Hennepin County Civil Defense Warning System. It is possible that you could cite severe weather before receiving the warning. In either case, move away from exterior windows and go to an enclosed elevator lobby or stairwell. Close all doors behind you as you leave your office. The greatest danger to you is flying glass or objects. You want the maximum number of walls between yourself and the building exterior. Never attempt to watch the storm by looking out of a window. If your elevator lobby is not fully enclosed, go to the nearest stairwell. If you experience a power outage, call our building management office at 952-921-2050. Please note that certain business phone systems will not operate during a power outage. Should the power failure affect the entire building, an announcement will be made over the emergency paging system. The park standby generating system will provide sufficient power for lighting and limited elevator service to your floor. Elevators are an essential part of life at Normandale Lake Office Park, but occasionally their automated control systems may malfunction. If an elevator stops between floors, use the intercom system located in the elevator car. This will put you in immediate contact with the central monitoring station, which will inform the elevator service company of the problem. Give them your location and the number of the elevator car, which can be found on the phone panel or the elevator button panel. Remain calm and do not attempt to force the doors open. The elevator repair service will assist you from the elevator as quickly as possible. In the event of a bomb threat, calmness is vital. If you have caller ID, write down the phone number of the caller. When speaking with the caller, try to record or remember as much information about the person as possible. Ask the caller such questions as, where is the bomb? When will it go off? What type of bomb is it? Why are you doing this? Who are you? Try to write the caller's exact words and make a mental note of the caller's voice. Is it a male or a female? Does the caller sound young or old or speak with an accent? Does the caller sound calm, nervous, or intoxicated? Listen carefully for any background noises, such as music, traffic, work sounds, airplanes, or children. Finally, note when the call was received and when it was terminated. As soon as the conversation has ended, call 911 immediately. Next, call building management at 952-921-2050. From that point on, emergency personnel will issue directions on what to do. At no time during a bomb threat should you touch or inspect any unidentified objects, such as a paper bag, box, briefcase, or duffel bag. If you see a suspicious object, call building management immediately at 952-921-2050. There are few emergencies which require quicker, clearer thinking than a fire. There are two different actions that you may need to take regarding a fire emergency. What to do if you see a fire and what to do if you hear a fire alarm. If you see a fire, call 911 immediately and then call 
2050. Give the exact location of the fire and inform your floor warden. Never minimize the potential danger of even a small fire, such as a burning wastebasket. You should be aware of the location of fire extinguishers on your floor. When using a fire extinguisher, it is important to plan an escape route. If a fire cannot be put out easily with an extinguisher, do not attempt to fight the fire. If such a fire is burning in your office, leave immediately and close the door behind you to help prevent the fire from spreading. To learn how to use a fire extinguisher correctly, remember the word PASS. P-A-S-S. S. Step 1 is to pull the pin out. Step 2 is to aim hose at the fire. Step 3 is to squeeze the handles. And step 4 is to sweep the hose from side to side at the base of the fire until you put it out. Again, the steps are P, pull the pin, A, aim, S, squeeze, and S, Sweep the hose from side to side. Pass. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. And sweep. What should you do if you hear an alarm? If a floor evacuation becomes necessary, you will hear a loud tone or voice warning, and you may see flashing strobe lights. Remember to remain calm. Proceed quickly to the nearest stairwell and go down to the exit level. When in the stairwell, walk in an orderly fashion and avoid pushing and bumping. Make sure you know the location of the stairwells on your floor. Tenants should assume an alarm is legitimate and proceed with evacuation. We ask tenants to refrain from verifying the alarm via a telephone call to the management office as this can distract personnel from tending to the situation. If you are wearing high-heeled shoes, Remove them to make walking down the stairwell faster and safer. Remember, do not try to use the elevators. They will have been automatically returned to the main level. Any physically challenged persons in your area should be assisted to a secure place on your floor, where help will arrive to evacuate them safely. Designated people should check conference rooms, restrooms, storage rooms, and remote areas to alert workers who may not have heard the evacuation signal. Once you have left your area, do not return until the all clear has been given. If your area fills with smoke, try to get as low to the floor as possible. It may be necessary to stoop or even crawl. More people are overcome by smoke than burned by flames, so do everything possible to stay under the smoke. Before leaving or entering through a closed door, Place a hand on the door. If the door feels hot to the touch, don't go through it as there may be flames on the other side. Should evacuation become necessary, remain calm and exit down the stairwells, following the instructions of your floor warden. Finally, we turn our attention to what to do in the event of workplace violence in the form of an active shooter. Remember these three simple rules. Evacuate, hide out, and fight in that order. Call 911 when you are able. Good practices for coping with an active shooter situation are, be aware of your environment and any possible dangers. Take note of the two nearest exits in any facility you visit. If you are in an office, stay there and secure the door. As a last resort, attempt to take the active shooter down. When the shooter is at close range and you cannot flee, your chance of survival is much greater if you try to incapacitate him or her. Evacuate. If there is an accessible escape path, attempt to evacuate the premises. Be sure to have an escape route and plan in mind. Evacuate regardless of whether others agree to follow. Leave your belongings behind. Help others escape if possible. Prevent individuals from entering an area where the active shooter may be. Keep your hands visible. Follow the instructions of any police officers. Do not attempt to move wounded people. Call 911 when you are safe. Hide out. If evacuation is not possible, find a place to hide where the active shooter is less likely to find you. Your hiding place should be out of the active shooter's view. Provide protection if shots are fired in your direction. 
not trap you or restrict your options for movement. To prevent an active shooter from entering your hiding place, lock the door. Blockade the door with heavy furniture. If the active shooter is nearby, lock the door. Silence your cell phone and or pager. Turn off any source of noise, such as a radio or television. Hide behind large items such as cabinets or desks. Remain quiet. If evacuation and hiding out are not possible, remain calm. Dial 911 if possible to alert police to the active shooter's location. If you cannot speak, leave the line open and allow the dispatcher to listen. Fight. Take action against the active shooter. As a last resort, and only when your life is in imminent danger, attempt to disrupt and or incapacitate the active shooter by acting as aggressively as possible against him or her, throwing items and improvising weapons, yelling, committing to your actions. For more information on what to do in the event of workplace violence, visit the U.S. Department of Homeland Security's website at www.dhs.gov. We hope it will never be necessary for you to use what you've learned in this video. But if an emergency does occur, you'll know to call 911 immediately and then to call building management at 952-921-2050. We want you to enjoy a safe, secure, comfortable work environment here at Normandale Lake Office Park.